Welcome back everybody to the second episode of Iowa City's Virtual Monarch Festival. I'm Bryce Marin at the East Side Recycling Center again. If you saw our episode last week, it focused on locating eggs on milkweeds and then getting those into some small containers. Hopefully you had some success with that in the past week. If not, don't give up. You know, the monarchs, they just kind of come and go in waves when they lay eggs. You just kind of never know when they start to show up. Out here, the best time for us has been typically July and August. People are always welcome to come out here. Certainly help you if we see you out here, if you like to look around for eggs out here, because we have lots of plants. For this week, we're gonna concentrate on raising the caterpillars that come out of those eggs. There's many different kinds of containers that you can use for this. There's many different kinds of methods. We're just gonna show you what we've done over the last few years here to uh, produce all those caterpillars and the chrysalises and the butterflies for the Monarch Festival over the years. It's important to note that before you do any kind of handling of your milkweed leaves, your caterpillars, it's always important to wash your hands first of any contaminants that you might have, uh, suntan lotions, uh, bug spray, obviously any kind of insecticide is a bad thing to have on your hands when you're handling bugs. After washing your hands, we're gonna focus here on when the caterpillars come out of those eggs and they're very, very tiny, they're hard to see, they're hard to find. What I do typically, we have a little caterpillar say in, in this container in the ramekin. If that caterpillar is on the leaf, if you can just gently grab that little leaf, you can set it onto a bigger one. I usually like to take a little bit of a wet paper towel and just kind of twist it on the edge where the sap's coming out of that leaf. And mostly uh, that's just to keep from having the sap mess up the inside of the container because they often get reused and it's good to recycle them. I usually typically add maybe uh, two or three caterpillars uh, on each one little leaf like this in a container of about this size. Um, no holes in the container. It looks like there's ones here, but I actually taped over them. They were used last year for something else. But little tiny caterpillars are escape artists and they can get out of these, uh, get through those holes pretty easily. I also like to keep a number of how many caterpillars are in here because when you go looking for them in the future, sometimes they can be a little bit hard to find. So you wanna make sure how many you're looking for. Once you have the little caterpillars in your container, it's important that you don't keep this container in the direct sunlight. Uh, that's not gonna be good for your caterpillars. So if you keep them outside, keep them in a shaded area at all times. If you wanna keep them inside in an air conditioned room, a question I get a lot is that, can I do that? And the answer is, yeah, you can. I've done that quite a bit myself here. Uh, and it does seem to keep the humidity levels down inside of the containers, which is an added benefit of putting them in an air conditioned room. So after having the caterpillars in here for a few days, what we do is we switch out the leaf every day, get a fresh leaf in there. Uh, we can take out the old ones on an as-need basis once the caterpillars aren't on there. After a few days, they're gonna get big enough where you might want to, where I, we like to split them off into bigger containers. And the containers that we use this year, we've used different ones every year, it's just kind of what's available. But this year, uh, this is what we have. If you can see that we poked some holes in here, uh, the holes aren't really for the critter to get oxygen so much as to keep the humidity down. Some people have lids that uh, they use with some kind of a mesh texture or something like that. There's different materials, but this has worked well for us. And again, uh, keeping this in an air conditioned room and, uh, would be a good idea as well to keep down the humidity. And we're only in the sun for a little while. Uh, the critter that's in here, the monarch, are going to go back in the shade in just a few minutes when we're done with our demonstration here. So at this point, we need to switch out a leaf for this guy here. We named this caterpillar Stripey. So what we're gonna do is undo the lid here. You can see that there's a leaf that we had on the top here. And the reason that this leaf was here was because this particular caterpillar is so big that it's about to go into, the, into its chrysalis any day now. 
and just wanted to make sure that it had a nice surface that it could attach to. Some different containers have surfaces that they have trouble attaching to. So since we have lots of milkweed leaves, I like to use these. Also, like it provides extra food, so if they're still hungry, they'll just go ahead and eat it anyways. So we're gonna take this leaf, and that's a day old, so we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna take our other leaf here, and that's a day old, we're gonna get rid of that. And we got one caterpillar in here. Uh, got a fresh leaf here. And he's on a little stem. Stripey is a big one. This, this is about the size of a caterpillar that you're, is gonna go into its chrysalis in another day or two. Um, and it's still looking hungry, it's looking around for things. So we're gonna have, at this point, put a little paper towel just wrap it around the end of the leaf there. Try not to drop them. Uh, lots of frass inside of the container too. You're gonna see like, these things have been going to town so they make a mess. So it's always good to empty this out. I don't know if you caught that there's quite a bit of moisture that's in the inside of this tank. Uh, it's probably because it's pretty hot out here today so it's, the heat's holding a lot of water. So I'm just gonna wipe that down with a paper towel, just get some of the moisture out. Get Stripey back here and get him in there. He's nice and happy. And then I got another leaf here. I'm gonna set it over the top. I like to face the underside down for them. And screw that back on. Stripey's good to go. The second method that we use out here at Eastside Recycling Center to raise our monarch caterpillars is using a big mesh cage. We touched on this in last week's episode. That cage was a little bit smaller and we decided to take the two that we put in there and set them into this larger one. Unlike your cup containers, you don't have to worry about sunshine. So you can put this out wherever you find milkweeds. Like last week, as we said, we modified the bottom. We cut a big hole, fortified the edges with duct tape, and then that way you can just drop your cage right on to some live milkweeds like we did here. I like the size of this particular enclosure. It's three feet tall, two feet wide by two feet. This is a really good size for milkweeds. We set this one up here, got some live milkweeds, set down the cage. You wanna make sure that you have some kind of a substrate on the bottom to cover up the hole that you have down there. So nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Uh, when you set the cage up, make sure that there's no ants or wasps or predatory insects inside there. And you pop your caterpillars in there and you should be good to go. We got a couple in here right now. They're sitting at the top and they're having a nice time. <laughs> you don't have to do a lot of work with this once you actually set up the enclosure. You just watch them grow and eventually they're going to get to the top of the container here. And next week when we're discussing chrysalises, sometimes you might want to have to transfer them if birds land on them or something. Sometimes they might want to try to fall off a little bit, but we'll discuss that next week. That's going to do it for this week. Just to recap some of the high points for raising your caterpillars. Wash your hands first. Keep it out of the sun. Try to keep the humidity down. You want to feed them every day, keep an eye on them. And when the caterpillar gets big, you might want to put a leaf or something just to make sure it can stick to the surface. And you can use just about any kind of container that has some decent size. 24 ounces or bigger is, is pretty good for me. Next week, we're gonna focus our discussion on the chrysalis phase of the, of the monarch butterfly. People really seem to enjoy looking and learning about them. And we hope to see you next week. Thanks again for watching.